Good evening. Today is July 22nd, and this is what I received today from the Lord. My child, write these words. I do not enjoy the days ahead. I do not want to destroy. I long to rescue my sheep. I long to deliver and to restore. My children, my heart is for you. My love is abundant. My eyes shine and dance with love for my people. I am going to begin to follow the way of the Father. He is going to rescue all who return to him. He will sing songs of gladness over the lost who return to his house. Many are still lost, so many. Many will perish, many will not return. I am burdened, I am distressed, but I will finish the work. I will accomplish all that is set before me to accomplish. Listen to me, all who are weary, the days are here. The day of your deliverance is not far off. Stay connected to me. I am your deliverer, your Adonai, your rest. I am the one who carries this burden. I am he. Do not fear, dear ones. Do not distress. I am coming. I am going to do all I have set out to do. You will not be asked to wait much longer. The day of your deliverance is here. I am the Lord. I will do as I have promised. You, you will soon see the complete picture, and you will know all I have said through my prophets is right and true. Do not question what I am saying, but exercise your faith in my promises. I am the word become flesh. I am the truth. I am life. Do not fear. I am coming, and you will be safe. You will not be harmed. You are carefully held in my Father's hands. He cherishes you. He created you, and he is never going to forsake you. Come to me with your fears and your doubts. Come and lay them at my feet. Sing songs of freedom, for great is your reward. Daughter, hear me. I am not yet done. The day of the Lord is going to be dreadful. It is unlike anything the world has ever endured. It is set before me to do. I will do it. It will be completed. The cleansing work will sweep over the earth and men will return. The magnitude of this is going to shock the world. The enormity of all that is about to take place is going to be frightening. But it is, but it is to remind people of the truth they have been running from. It is to prepare their hearts for repentance. It is to restore them back to their father, not to destroy and abandon. No, the father loves and forgives and restores and renews. The battle live, I'm sorry, the battle lines are drawn now. The great war is coming. The tanks are full and the enemy is crouching, ready for attack. Children, you will not be harmed. You are safe in my care. You are all named and precious. Do not fear what is coming. Hope for the day that awaits. It is a new day, a day of celebration and rejoicing, a day of freedom and singing and dancing. Your Father loves you. He has made a way for you. He has loved you with an everlasting love. He has placed his seal on your foreheads. You are his. He said, is there anything else, Lord? Melissa, you can deliver these words to my people. They will hear them and they will not grow faint, but will rejoice in the truth. My children, I am coming. I will pick up my bride, and we will be one. Sing to me, children. Ready your hearts. Prepare for my return. I am the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, and I have spoken these words. The scripture he gave, Revelations 14, 6, and that came up two times. So I start it, and I read the whole that whole section. I also heard later, Revelation 2, 4 through 6. Daniel 6, 18, Habakkuk 3, 4, Song of Solomon 1, 3 through 4, Proverbs 4, 6, Lamentations 2, 14, Genesis 3, 2 through 3, Titus 2, 1 through 4, Malachi 3, 6, Hab uh, Hebrews 3, 2, 2 Timothy 2, 6, Isaiah 2, 16 through 22, Proverbs 3, 23, Jeremiah 6, 4. I heard the word sanctify, surrender, be made new, total annihilation. Remember when he says total annihilation, I know that he's cleansing the earth of sin and wickedness, and he doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants people to let go of their idols and return to him. 
Um, so he's not a God who wants to destroy people, but he does want to destroy idols and things that come between him and you. Um, the number one commandment is love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, and soul. And if anything comes between you and the Father, it's an idol. And he wants you to lay all those idols down and seek him and uphold him above all the created things because he is the creator. He doesn't want us to worship things created with our own hands. He doesn't want us to worship things he's created. He wants us to worship him, our creator and our father God. A while back, the Lord asked me how I felt about it when he talked to me about prophetic things like uh, he's talked to me about Iran and Lebanon and Saudi Arabia, Israel, and of course he knows how I feel, but he was just revealing to myself how I felt by asking me that question. And it's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable when he talks to me about wars and things like that. And um, he said in this message to exercise faith, and that was something I talked about a lot yesterday. And I actually had a little talk on it in the video last night, but I took it out. And um, so I think he wants me to talk about it because he brought it up. So that's why it, got, it went from like light to really dark last night because I cut out a section. But faith, isn't faith unless it's uncomfortable. Faith doesn't make sense unless it's exercised and there's discomfort in it. I mean, that's inherent in faith. If you look at scripture, every time somebody was asked to fulfill their God-given purpose, um, to fulfill, fulfill his perfect will for their lives, he appeared to them and he told them, do not fear. And he's in all of these messages, he says to me, do not fear. And he often says to his children, do not fear. Because we're being asked to exercise faith. And these messages, every time I receive them, it's uncomfortable. And it's very uncomfortable because I'm waiting just like you are for him to fulfill these promises. And I just sat with him today. I was like, Lord, are you really saying these things to me? And his answer is always the same. He always says, Melissa, you know it's me because I have done this work in you. And I do. I know it's him because in my wildest imaginations, I would not have decided this for my life or even knew it was possible or knew it was a thing. He has taught me. He has given me this, this to do, this assignment, and it takes faith. Every day, it takes faith. And he's ask, asking all of us to exercise faith. And if you feel sick inside, if you feel discomfort, it's, it's because our flesh wars against it and faith is believing in things unseen. And it's trusting the Lord that he is who he says he is, even though we can't imagine it. We can't put ourselves in the future and see how all of this is going to work or understand his mind. But we are exercising faith in that he is unchanging. He is who he says he is. He is love. And he is our creator God and he he has written the story he has plans and we are his children and we have to trust him with childlike faith and just put our faith in him and know that he, everything he says that we aren't going to be harmed he is holding us and we have things to rejoice about we have a future not to harm us but to bless us and we're crossing over soon into that future I don't know when I'm waiting just like you are and I am exercising faith every day and he you know how in the news they use the technique like they just say things and say things and say things and say things until we believe it 
I kind of feel like that's what he's doing here. He says the same things over and over and over. And some people are like, well, you know, he says a lot of things, but nothing ever happens. Well, it's in his good grace and mercy that he's he's telling us this and preparing our hearts um, for for what's to come. Because I think we're gonna see we're gonna see some hard things possibly, and uh, he's just readying us because he loves us. So. Anyway, those are just some thoughts that I had. So I will plan on seeing you tomorrow, uh, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. <laughs> A quick story uh, for anyone who's interested. Last night, my dog, well, a couple nights ago I was out by a field and somebody asked me if there's a turkey in the background and I mentioned I didn't see a turkey but there was a porcupine and my dog saw it and he's gotten quilled twice and one time kind of recently you probably remember I was at the vet all day and uh, he had to drive pretty far to emergency vet and it, that gets so expensive he's done it twice and we're like we're not paying for any more vet bills and last night uh, I let him go and he remembered that porcupine he went after it it's like a challenge for him or something and I usually he just comes right to the house when it's nighttime, it's time for bed, he'll come in, but he took off and I was like, great, he's going after that porcupine. And um, I should have known better, better and put him on his leash, but I didn't. So he came in with a mouthful of quills and thankfully, oh, thank you Lord, that they weren't inside of his mouth, they were just all over his out, outside of his mouth. So today we saran wrapped his muzzle and wrapped him in a towel and bear hugged him. We even saran wrapped his eyes shut so he couldn't see but oh my goodness that was <laughs> not fun. I had to pull each quill out with these pliers and I was like shaking like it, it was hard to do. I'm not good at stuff like that but we got it done. So anyway to the person that I talked to about the porcupine that's that's the rest of the story. All right I will see you all soon. Uh, God bless you. Have a great evening.